uh, anemias, right? An anemia. So an anemia means you have a decreased amount of hemoglobin or red blood cells. Okay? Either decreased hemoglobin or decreased red blood cells. There are numerous causes. I'll mention a few of them. Nutritional anemia, pretty obvious, caused by poor nutrition. Right? So if you have inadequate amounts of, of heme in your, or iron in your diet, or protein in your diet, B12, folic acid, right? you're going to end up with a nutritional anemia. A type of anemia that we call pernicious anemia. That word pernicious, I don't care that you know this, but pernicious means harmful. Right? So they called this pernicious anemia, harmful anemia. Pernicious anemia is due to a lack of absorption of vitamin B12. And lack of absorption of B12. So uh, the person can have adequate amounts of B12 in their diet. By the way, folks, B12 only comes from animal products. There's, you can get it from yeast as well. But otherwise, only from animal products. How you doing, Ben? That was one of my former students there. <laughs> uh, and pills. What's that? And, and pills. Oh, well, certainly you get B12 from pills. Yes. And get, can, they make it synthetically without it being from an animal? You know, I, I don't know that. I wouldn't, I'd have to check. I don't know if it's made synthetic. I really don't know. I'd have to check. Uh, Vegan. So B12 comes from animal products, okay? Uh, but you can check people with pernicious anemia and find that they have plenty of B12 in their diet, but they're not absorbing the B12. It turns out that the only way you can absorb vitamin B12 is if your stomach produces a particular glycoprotein called the intrinsic factor. Okay? So your stomach has to be producing this intrinsic factor and it will allow you to absorb B12. So when people have pernicious anemia, it's not due to a deficiency in B12, it's due to a deficiency in their stomach's ability to produce intrinsic factor. Very commonly to correct this abnormality, the physician will simply give the person a vitamin B12 injection. Then you don't have to worry about absorbing it, right? You've already got it in the body then by injecting it. Intrinsic factor is also uh, available uh, so that you can give the person intrinsic factor with B12 and then they can absorb it. Something called hemorrhagic anemia. What do you think causes hemorrhagic anemia? Pretty easy there, right? Hemorrhagy, right? So hemorrhagic anemia. And then an interesting uh, type of anemia that you've heard of somewhere called sickle cell anemia. Huh? This is a, an inherited disorder. And when we look at uh, a person's blood that has sickle cell anemia, we find that some of their cells are sickle, not all of them. But so, right, we expect to see this biconcave disc, but clearly here are cells that are abnormal, at well, least the, the sickle ones. When these sickle cells show up in your liver and in your spleen, what do you suppose the macrophages are gonna do? They're going to eat them up, right? They say, this is abnormal. This is an abnormal shape. I'd better eat these cells up. And so the reason these people are anemic is their body is breaking down these sickled cells at such a high rate that their body can't, the marrow can't keep up with the loss due to uh, the, the breaking down by, by macrophages. It's an inherited disorder. Uh, it's inherited as a recessive trait. And so this would be a typical Punnett square. Those of you who have lab, we went through lots of Punnett squares early in the semester. And so here would be a, a, a mother that has the dominant gene that says, produce normal hemoglobin, don't sickle. All right? And she has a recessive gene that says, make this uh, sickled type of hemoglobin. She marries a man, let's say he is also heterozygous. Dominant gene says normal. Recessive gene says make the sickle type. And so if you look at possible offspring, here would be a normal individual, both dominant, normal genes, right, for the gene of the uh, blood the sickle. Uh, here's two heterozygotes. And then this is the individual which would end up with sickle cell anemia. Historically, uh, these children have died at a relatively early age because there wasn't anything that they could do, right? Before there was modern medicine, their cells 
continued to be sickled, eaten by the macrophages, the children had severe anemias, and they, they died. When geneticists started looking at this, uh, they were very surprised. And, and they were surprised because there is a high incidence of the heterozygotes that we find in populations near uh, the equator, really in areas where we find malaria. And they said something's really wrong with this genetic picture because if a gene is harmful and causes death, the gene is being sucked out of the population and so it should disappear from the population. We know that the, the actual mutation that occurred to make this was a single substitution. We talked about this early in the course, right? So instead of the normal CTT, right, that we'd expect to find in DNA in people with sickle cell anemia, we find CAT. So the, the uh, adenine has been substituted for the thymine uh, in, in these individuals. So a single point mutation, right, just a single substitution, and yet a relatively high proportion of people in these particular areas near the equator are, are found to have this gene. So uh, close to 50%. Here in the United States, uh, about one in 10 uh, people of African descent have this gene for sickle cell anemia. Well, it took them quite a while to figure this out, but eventually what they figured out is that if you are a heterozygote, for this gene, right? So you have both the dominant and recessive gene. You are resistant to the malarial parasite. If you end up with both copies of the gene, you get sickle cell anemia and you're gonna probably die. If you live near the equator where malaria is common and you receive both dominant genes, the normal genes, you're gonna die from malaria. malaria. And so who survives? the heterozygotes, and that's why this gene is, is relatively common. Question? For any of these names, is there like physical symptoms that... Uh, so what are the physical symptoms? Well, these people have anemia, uh, and so uh, they are certainly gonna have a hard time doing exercise, right, and, and doing things that, that what we would expect them to do. We can help them now with sickle cell anemia. We can give them tr uh, transfusions uh, to replace the blood that, that uh, they are losing. There are actually uh, drugs that can be used to help uh, make the cells a little more rigid so they tend not to, to sickle so much. But they do tend to go through uh, cycles, periods uh, of crises when all of a sudden their cells will start to, to sickle, perhaps from going up to altitude uh, or exerting themselves. So the cells start to sickle and when the, when the red blood cells give up their oxygen, that's when they tend to, to sickle. And so they, they do very strenuous activity or they go up to altitude, the cells start to give off their oxygen, they start to sickle, and as they start to sickle, they might start to plug up capillaries in the tissues, uh, causing damage to the tissues that are beyond where the plug occurs. The, the macrophages are gonna start eating them at a, uh, the red cells at a higher rate than normal. And so they tend to go through these crises periods and certainly they can't transport oxygen as well as, as a, a normal person. Yes, Alex. Do they know how heterozygotes have resistance to malaria? Somebody probably knows, I suspect, right, that the malarial parasite can't live in the red cells because of probably a, a depressed change of nutrients for that malaria parasite. Somebody probably knows that, I don't know. But somebody probably has tried to figure that out. Uh, and here was the same artist showing the, a sickle cell, right? So that would be picture. All right, uh, so what are the effects of severe anemia? Um, tissues can start to die. It excessively stresses the cardiovascular system, so the heart is gonna to try to pump blood at a higher uh, rate and higher pressure, trying to supply the nutrients. So you're gonna stress the cardiovascular system, and you're gonna certainly stress tissues as they are unable to get adequate amounts of, of oxygen. The opposite of an anemia would be something called polycythemia. Polycythemia having excessive numbers of red blood cells. So here I have a picture of Machu Picchu, uh, about 8,000 feet. Why on earth would I have a picture of Machu Picchu for polycythemia? Well, 
oxygen levels. Low oxygen levels. And so by being at low oxygen levels, the people that live there end up with polycythemia. So we expect some people to have polycythemia. It is a normal adaptation to living at a high elevation. Right? So we expect that. However, if we see polycythemia in individuals that don't live at high elevation, one can start to become concerned. So uh, very commonly, we end, uh, people that are smokers have polycythemia. That makes some sense. People that are smokers are loading themselves up with carbon monoxide. They have inadequate amounts of oxygen, and that tends to stimulate the, the kidneys to produce uh, erythropoietin. People that have emphysema oftentimes end up with polycythemia, right? So if the person is, is not adequately transporting oxygen, we would expect them to develop uh, polycythemia. Okay. Thalassemia. Yeah, thalassemia is found in people of mostly mid, uh, mid-eastern descent, right? Uh, and Southeast Asian. South and, and I worked for the um, Ministry of Public Health in Bangkok, and, and that was a big issue yeah. There, there. Yeah, so it's another genetic abnormality. Uh, I don't know of any adva ad advantage to having that gene. There may be one out there that geneticists are trying to find, but I, I don't know. And but it's another And what does mutation. it do? How, do? how does it cause uh, anemia? It's a similar change to hemoglobin. I don't know the, the genetic change that has occurred there. And it, to give someone who's, you know, you identify anemia and you give them prescribed iron and that kills someone. Yeah, I, I've said, know, it's been too long since I've looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, I never knew what it, yeah. what was about. I just worked on trying to find uh, about it. 